name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who governs all things, both in heaven and in earth, Mercifully hear the pleadings of your people and bestow the, your peace on our times. For Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, now our high priest has obtained such, so much more excellent a ministry as he is mediator of a better covenant, enacted on better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, no place would have been sought for a second one. But he finds fault with them and says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will conclude a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they did not stand by my covenant, and I ignored them, says the Lord. But this is the covenant I will establish with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their minds, and I will write upon their hearts, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall not teach each one his fellow citizen and kin, saying, Know the Lord. For all shall know me, from least to greatest. For I will forgive their evil doing, and remember their sins no more. When he speaks of a new covenant, he declares the first one obsolete. And what has become obsolete has grown old and is close to disappearing. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. <coughs> the responsorial song. Kindness and truth shall meet. Kindness, Kindness and truth shall meet. meet. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Kindness, Kindness and truth shall meet. meet. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Kindness, Kindness and truth shall meet. meet. The Lord himself will give his benefits, our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and salvation along the way of his steps. Kindness, Kindness and truth shall be. You stand. Alleluia. 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 God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went up the mountain and summoned those whom he wanted whom he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, that they might be with him, and he might send them forth to preach, and to have authority to drive out demons. 
He appointed the twelve, Simon, whom he named Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, whom he named Warnagers, that is, sons of thunders, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Cariot, who betrayed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The appointment of the twelve. But before that, the gospel says, Jesus went up to the mountain. We have read, in fact, a few days ago, we also mentioned that in the life of the Lord, going up to the mountain was a very important part of his life. To go up to the mountain was to commune with the Father, to pray. It's almost like, you know, um, early in the morning, you come to church. I mean, you can pray at home, but you decided to come to church and pray inside the church. Same thing with the Lord. He could have prayed anywhere, but the mountain back then, at least during the time of the Lord, and in the, in the Old Testament, in biblical times, the presence of God was really in the mountains. And so to go to the mountain was really to pray, to commune with God. And in the life of the Lord, he would always go up to the mountain to commune with his Father, to pray. But especially today, he went up to the mountain to pray because he was doing something that was very important. Choosing the twelve from among his followers, from among the disciples, all the other followers are called disciples, like all of us are disciples. But of these disciples, he chose 12 to be apostles. Now, in the gospel, the title, the 12, is only reserved to the 12 apostles. And of course, so it's, it's a technical term, the 12, meaning the 12 apostles. And the capital letter A, apostles, it only refers to them. And, of course, St. Paul said he too was an apostle, so it extends to St. Paul. Now, we reflect on this in our context. Christ chose 12. Why? The Gospel says, because he sent them to proclaim the kingdom. To proclaim the kingdom. Of course, he sent everyone, all his followers. But some of his followers were really uh, more the, the curious followers. You know, they were not really like kind of fans of the Lord. They kept following the Lord. Some of them kept following simply because they were expecting miracles, something that the Lord would perform for them. And so he was very careful to choose a group of people whom he could really trust and send to proclaim the kingdom of God. And what is the kingdom of God? We have explained it, and Christ explained it in many ways. He says, you know, the kingdom of God is at hand, and he would always refer to that as a kingdom of peace, a kingdom of love, a kingdom of justice, a kingdom of wholeness. That's why when he would perform miracles, for example, a, a sick person is cured and restored to full health, Christ would always say, behold the kingdom of God. Otherwise, the kingdom of God is about that. We are all restored back. Restored back to the Father. Restored back to everything. Because the kingdom of evil and sin is really the breakdown in everything. Remember after the fall of humanity? That was the fall of the sin. We broke everything. And so the kingdom is really fixing everything. Bring it back together again. Healing. Restoring someone, you know, uh, someone who died and restoring them back to life. That's the kingdom of God. And of course, many other dimensions. So making the presence of God in the lives of other people. That was essential in the proclamation of the kingdom of God. That was the role of the 12 apostles. Okay. Now, fast forward 2023 to all of us today. As he said, 
that 12 is a technical term referring only to the 12. And the apostles, capital letter A, only refers to them. And of course, St. Paul. But we are also apostles, small letter A. In other words, we are also sent to proclaim the kingdom of God. We don't simply sit down. The reason we are here in church, those of us who are um, following us online, celebrating the Eucharist with us online all over the world, the reason we are Catholics is because people before us perform their jobs of being apostles. They proclaim the kingdom to us. And so we believe in them. We believe them. No, we believe them to be trustworthy. We believe them to be credible of what they taught us, that there is God, that there is kingdom of God, that there is salvation, there is eternal life. Our parents, our grandparents, our catechists, they taught us. And we deem them to be credible and trustworthy. And so we believe in them. That's why we are here. But the mission does not stop. We continue to proclaim. Now, we have to be at the same time trustworthy and credible to be able to proclaim the kingdom of God. Otherwise, the message about the kingdom will fall on deaf ears if we don't make ourselves trustworthy and credible as apostles, proclaimers of the kingdom of God. And so this is a very difficult challenge um, for us when we are sent. You know, in, in our modern times, um, we have a term called influencers. You've probably heard of that. And most of them are really social media influencers. Back then, uh, most of um, the influencers were uh, the traditional media people, or at least people seen in traditional media, like, you know, um, Hollywood stars and broadcasters and sports personalities and, you know, people who are familiar because we see them always. We see their faces every day, at least, you know, on TV or in newspapers. And when we talk about endorsements, you know, when um, a certain personality uh, endorses a certain brand of shampoo, and we know that that brand would really sell. Why? Because, um, oh, that person actually, um, Angelina Jolie, uh, uses um, uh, shampoo. <laughs> and so people buy it. We don't want to buy a simple and ordinary shampoo, but we want to buy shampoo endorsed by. Now, there are many social media personalities created by the internet. Some of them use their influence for good. Others create media accounts or media content, as they would say, media content for the sake of gaining more followers. Some of those contents really are trash. I mean, I'm sorry. But um, again, here's the challenge. If we are in that position that we can influence others, Remember, to be an influencer doesn't only mean that those who have one million followers and one million friends on social media. We are also influencers in many different ways. As parents, you have influence your children as teachers or at work. So, uh, we can influence many people in many different ways. And so how do we use that influence in evangelizing, in telling people about God, about salvation, about eternal life, about goodness, about generosity, about forgiveness. How do we use our influence? Because we are also apostles. We believe in God because other people taught us. It's now our turn to proclaim God to others, to proclaim the kingdom to others, to be evangelizers. But one thing we have to always also remember is the 12 they were not perfect. They tried their best, but they were also human. We know St. Peter who denied Christ three times, uh, St. John and St. James who were asking the Lord to sit on his right and on his left. Of course, we have the most famous of all, Judas, who betrayed the Lord. 
They were not perfect, but they did their best. Out of these 12 simple, ordinary people, there are more than 2 billion Christians all over the world now. In other words, it did not prevent their imperfection, did not prevent the church from flourishing. And I think same thing for us. We cannot simply say, oh, you know, I would like to uh, proclaim God to others and to tell God to others, but I am not perfect. People know my weaknesses. People know that, you know, uh, people know my past. I mean, who has not? Who of us don't have a past? You know, and we all have secrets in the past. All of us. There's no doubt about that. But it should not prevent us from proclaiming God to others. Imperfection, weakness, sinfulness should not prevent us from becoming apostles, evangelizers, proclaimers of the kingdom of God. Now to end, I would like to read this part of um, The Little Prince, one of the books I liked when I was uh, younger. I still read them every now and then. Um, this is part of the portion where, you know, um, the, uh, the Little Prince was talking about realities, you know, um, imperfection and um, weaknesses. And he said, it should not prevent me from, it should not prevent us from doing something good anyway. I don't have my glasses, so I probably would be. <clears throat> because the, this line is very important. And I think it should, um, it resonates uh, very well, at least to me, uh, when it comes to uh, not giving up simply because um, of our weaknesses. Uh, and our imperfections and limitations in life. It is madness to hate all roses because you got scratched with one thorn. To give up on your dreams because one didn't come true. To lose faith in prayers because one was not answered. To give up on our efforts because one of them failed. To condemn all your friends because one betrayed you. Not to believe in love because someone was unfaithful or didn't love you back. To throw away all your chances to be happy because you didn't succeed in the first attempt. I hope that as you go on your way, you don't give in nor give up. I think it's true for all of us. As apostles, we don't give up. We, we will not, not always succeed. Uh, People would probably ridicule us, laugh at us, and they would question us. We will not stop uh, proclaiming the kingdom of God. We will not stop being kind. We will not stop being generous. We will not stop being forgiving. Because we are apostles of Christ. We are apostles of God. We will make our lives a presence of God in this world. Trusting our Heavenly Father's love, let us now offer our prayers this day. We pray for the pilgrim church on earth. May God truly write his law on our hearts and teach us to love each person we encounter. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for leaders who profess the Christian faith. May Jesus give them the grace to serve with righteousness and integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for those burdened by sin and despair. May God's mercy reach their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all who have died in the light of faith. May they soon rest in the eternal light of Christ. <clears throat> Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and today we pray in a very special way for a special intention. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for all of us gathered today, for ourselves, for those who ask for prayers, whom we promise to pray for, pray for members of our families, our loved ones, our friends who are ill, may the Lord restore them to full health. We pray for the safety and protection of our families and our loved ones. We pray for an end to war, especially in, in Europe. We pray for the safety of those who are joining the March for Life. And for all the intentions, we hold thee in the silence of our hearts.
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious God, please hear and answer the prayers we have brought to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us our bread of life. Blessed be God for us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of divine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let us be God Let us not pray that my sacrifice and yours are made acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good Grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ, O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just, a duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you, holy people, who stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jews fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullest of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, 
and all the saints have pleased you throughout the ages. We merit to be co-heirs of eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from the evil and gracefully grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let us offer each other the sign of Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Pour in us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ, O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a beautiful